The most infamous murder on the Rogivic Range occurred in her late on April 11th of 1890. Lotta Morgan, 28-year-old prostitute and entertainer, was found in an alley behind a saloon. All right, okay, all right, yo, all right. Awkward intros. <laughs> okay guys, it's been a long time no see. I'm joined by my beautiful daughter, Alicia, and today we're gonna tell you a pretty wild, unsolved murder that happened in 1890 in Hurley, Wisconsin. She's this, it's your first time. Yeah. Your first timer, <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna tell Alicia this pretty insane story of the murder of Lotta Morgan, also known as Lottie Morgan. And she was an actress from 1890 in Hurley, Wisconsin, a booming, at one time, a booming mining town for iron. And her case goes unsolved today, so let's get into it. Hurley, Wisconsin once held a notorious reputation in its early days. Being compared to the likes of Las Vegas and even Tombstone, this once booming mining town sits on the very top of the state. Hurley was reputed for its sinful silver strip, where bars and prostitution ran rampant. Even J. Edgar Hoover, once the head of the FBI, had a particular bone to pick with the unlawful town up until his death in 1972. At one time, as many as 4,000 people populated this place. This was during the lumber and mining booms that swept the nation at the end of the 19th century. Iron was a hot commodity, and Hurley held one of the most lustrous mines for iron at that time. This would invite a variety of unsavory characters to the area and help seal its bad rap, so to speak. I'm gonna take you back in time, Alicia. I know you are a big fan of history as well. You're just like your mother. <sighs> Girl after my own heart. So I'm gonna tell you the story of a small mining town at the very, very top of Wisconsin. Now in this small town of Hurley, Wisconsin, which is only like a population 1,200 something today, but at this time where they discovered these, these iron mines, an absolute like boom happens and up to like, I think 4,000 people were living there at, at one time, which was a lot, you know, for 1890, this would be considered a very booming town. This little city was also referred to or compared to the likes of like Tombstone, Las Vegas. It was wild. The shit that went down at Hurley, Wisconsin, a place of ill repute where Everybody knew knew it for its prostitution, its rough and tumble bars, and it was also very notorious for its silver strip, which was just littered with saloons and, you know, drug deals on the street and brawls and, and, and everything that you could imagine from a Wild West town was right there in this little mining city of Hurley, Wisconsin. And now, <laughs> Because it was a mining town, this would obviously bring a, a cast of colorful characters to the scene. So you've got like corrupt politicians, you've got like unlawful, you know, police officers. This place was so prolific that even J. Edgar Hoover, who was head of the FBI from like the 19, I think, 40s into the 19, all the way until his death in 1972, he literally had it out for this town. He hated Hurley, Wisconsin, and he wanted it shut down by any means necessary. He would unfortunately never live to see that happen, but eventually Hurley would fizzle on out. But I digress. Other than mining and all the crime that was running rampant, there was something else that Hurley was known for, and that would be the unsolved case of Lottie or Lotta Morgan. Her life was cut short by an axe-wielding monster who's never been caught for his heinous crime. Rumors of corrupt officials and jilted lovers clouded this mystery for decades. Lotta, whose birth given name was Laura Whittlesey or even Laura Whittle, had come to Wisconsin and pursued a career as an actress where she took the name Lotta Morgan. She was nicknamed Lottie, and that seems to be the name she's most known by. The official year of her birth is unknown, but it's speculated to be between 1861 and 1863, placing her at approximately 27 to 29 years of age when she was viciously murdered. We're coming into the, you know, the new century. It's about to be the 1900s. Things are really changing all around America. Industrial revolution has hit. You know, we got trains being laid all over the place. Yeah, train, train tracks. 
were being laid all over the place, connecting us to places we had never been able to access before. I just can't get over the badass reputation this place has, just because it's the small Wisconsin city. You don't hear, you hear about Tombstone, you hear about Las Vegas, Sin City, Wisconsin. but Hurley, Wisconsin? <laughs> and Hurley was actually named after a lawyer from Wausau, won a, like, um, a court battle and it ended up getting him named after the town. Anyways, just a little backstory for you. Lottie Morgan, they deduced that she was most likely born between 1861 and 1863. And when she was found dead in 1890, they placed her at about 27 to 29 years old. She comes to Hurley, Wisconsin to, to be an actress. And she's actually a very well-liked actress. But she had one dark cloud that hung over her. It was rumored that she was a high-end escort or prostitute for all the elite members of society. But again, this was just a rumor. It's not sure if that was true or not. Lottie never said herself, and so it's just kind of, you know, vague whether or not that was her line of work. But regardless, even with that, she was still very well liked. She was very well liked. She was also in a relationship or possibly married, like these reports vary, but she was dating a local politician named John Sullivan. As I said, most accounts on this case describe Lottie as very popular amongst everyone that knew her. Even though most accounts claim Lottie was a high-end escort to the upper echelon, there is no proof of that, nor did Lottie herself ever confirm these rumors. It was said that many wealthy lovers showered her with lavish gifts. Although Lottie was married or in a relationship to the politician John Sullivan, it didn't seem to be a marriage of love, but rather a mutual understanding of business. The two did not seem to have a bad partnership regardless. Like many booming pioneer mining towns, trouble was always found in Hurley. On the night of April 11th, 1890, Lottie was seen alive at John Sullivan's saloon. It's theorized when she proceeded to leap through a back alley to her home, it was there she would be greeted by her killer. So Lottie is allegedly being showered in many gifts and she's being sent jewels from these like, I read lumber barons and these, <laughs> yes, these very like wealthy, you know, rich men who just wanted to get Lottie's love so and affection. Thirsty boys were chasing little Lottie around Hur Hurley, Wisconsin. <laughs> the lumber trade is still booming in Wisconsin. So these things are still like happening as Lottie's living her life. Oh, so this was Wisconsin Sin City. Hurley was rough. But the people were said to take care of themselves. That they didn't take that kind of shit, like murders and stuff like that. They weren't having that in Hurley. So when Lottie is discovered on April, I think, 12th, 1890, it's discovered that she has a large axe wound in her from her like temple through her eye and then there was another slash which it didn't specify exactly where but they were both in her head and they knew that she was killed by an axe and she's it said that she was leaving the saloon of her husband boyfriend whoever John Sullivan's saloon on the night of her murder and she was trying to walk home when somebody comes out of the alley and absolutely they just kill her instantly. Wow. So she's found the next morning, but this is where it gets really bizarre. Without warning, two blows from an ax connected with Lottie's skull, killing her instantly. Another gash was discovered and thought to be either a gunshot or stab wound, but no bullet was found. And though it is not clear where the injury came from, Lottie's 32 caliber revolver was found at either her feet or head, and it had not been fired. Robbery was quickly ruled out as all her jewelry, as well as $20, which was equivalent to $600 today money, were found at the scene. Sexual motives were also ruled out. So who exactly would want Lottie dead? While many theories permeate this sordid mystery, one theory puts it that Lottie may have been targeted for being a witness to a rather large bank robbery that took place adjacent from her residence. Believing Lottie had a clear line of sight, it was said she was being forced to testify against the perpetrators. It was stated, though, that Lottie refused to talk, as well as it was said she, and I quote, said, she was no snitch. So Lottie was found with all her jewelry and $20 on her, which $20 and all the jewelry collectively was equivalent to about like $5,000 Ameri like American money today. 
So that was a lot of money back then. You know, 20 bucks I think was equal to like, I think it was like $600 or something. Oh, in I, that's what I was like, I'd be going back with all my 20, I'd be living the good life. I'd be throwing pennies out the window. I would be flooding the streets with that copper. So $20 was a large sum of money in 1890. So all this was found on Lottie. All the jewelry, everything collectively found. So they were like, okay, robbery isn't a motive. Okay, well then what else could be, you know? And they're like, well, maybe she was sexually assaulted. No, she was not. She was found to be not molested whatsoever. They just seemed to crack her in the head with the axe twice and then possibly also stabbed her as they found another wound, I think, in the chest area, which they at first thought was a gunshot because they found Lottie's 32 caliber revolver. And it, it was varied in reports as where it was found. It was either found by her head or by her feet. And I feel like that that might be important because I'm thinking, like, did Lottie when she got hit or did the guy arouse her and she tried to grab her gun and drop it, you know, was already like hit in the head. It started making me wonder, you know, how did the gun get out of, you know, her, her, either her purse or I don't know if she had it like stuffed in her brassiere. I always think that, you know, back in the old days, they got like a, a pistol shoved in the corset <laughs> and they're just like, ha! Ah. So that was like where I was just, I, I would like to know the placement of the gun precisely. It was something that bothered me, even though I know it's probably not important, but I digress. So they deduced that it wasn't a gunshot because there was never a bullet found and they assumed that it might have been a stab wound. And they think that the stab wound or the injury that they had found happened after she had already been hit in the head with the axe. And that was the killing blow. I think it was the very first blow instantly killed her. I mean, you're not gonna survive a hatchet to your, well, not true. In the New Orleans axe murder case, this woman got cracked in the head like twice and then had a baby and was perfectly fine. Oh, yeah. That's terrible. So right, right around the time that Lottie was murdered, so many theories and, you know, um, rumors were just circulating in the town. People are coming up with all kinds of ideas of why Lottie was murdered. So it was said that Lottie was actually a witness to a very massive bank robbery at the Iron Exchange Bank. This was like some shit out of Red Dead Redemption. I'm not even kidding you. These men roll up and they rob the bank for $39,000, which was a ton of money back then, okay? And they, they ended up like only, I think, getting two of the guys that they believe, you know, organized the robbery. And it was also said that Lottie witnessed this robbery because she lived right across from it and had like the perfect view and they believed that she had seen everything that happened. And now this kind of put a target on her back because when the police come to investigate this robbery and they're like, oh, Lottie, we know you saw something. We need you to testify. You need to testify. And she actually refused. She said she didn't want to. She didn't want to. And I quote, she said she was like, a report said she was no snitch. So that kind of led them to believe that, well, why would they kill somebody that was openly against, you know, snitching on them? And that was kind of the, the attitude of the whole town is like, what happened in Hurley stayed in Hurley, just like Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens in Hurley stayed in Hurley. It wasn't too clear whether or not she could have been the target of these two men that orchestrated this big ass bank robbery, which still blows my mind. $39,000 in 1890. That'd be like a million dollars, dude. That had to be some hella cash. I said the iron exchange was such a profitable and like business. You were making just insane amounts for the time. They start to think maybe uh, Lottie was the victim of like a jilted lover, you know, or a scorned lover that she had maybe burned the wrong man or broke the wrong man's heart, pissed off the wrong woman, you know, sleeping with her husband and she was not having it and had Lottie killed. It's unclear, like, who would have had a motive to kill Lottie because literally they would speak to the whole town and nobody had a bad thing to say about her other than she may have dabbled in prostitution, which was never confirmed again. So it's unclear what a solid motive would be. People would say it was Lottie's infidelity and philanderous ways that caught up with the young actress. The bloody axe used to take her life was located a short distance from the scene of the crime in a shed. Unfortunately, this would lead investigators nowhere and no solid leads would ever come about. Eventually, this case would run colder than a Wisconsin winter and fade into obscurity. Lotta Morgan was given a very lavish funeral where many people came in attendance to mourn the loss of the beloved actress from this community. At one time, as much as $500 was offered for any information on her slaying. Again, nothing. 
body was laid to rest with a gravestone that people would come and chisel pieces from as a form of a morbid souvenir. Sadly, all that's left of the headstone is just rubble and body essentially lies in an unmarked grave. So like I said, they were looking for any sort of suspect that could have been involved in Lottie's case. And do you know what notorious murders were going on around this time? <laughs> the Whitechapel Jack the Ripper murders. Oh. So 1888, I think 1888 or 89 was the last, um, the, the, out of the five canonical victims, the last one was murdered. I think just a year or two prior to the Lottie uh, Morgan slaying. People are starting to think, maybe it's Jack the Ripper, <laughs> even though there really was nothing to indicate that this was a Ripper slang. They were trying to just, I guess, they were desperately grasping at straws. The odds of Jack the Ripper being in Hurley, Wisconsin, and then potentially even making his way to the New York Ripper murders, which they classified as another case of slangs that they thought may have been related to Jack the Ripper. They even thought that one of the serial killers in Wisconsin's early days, I did one on him, I call him his Wisconsin's Jack the Ripper. They thought that maybe even he had been involved in some way or that maybe he was actually Jack the Ripper. There was just a slew of theories going around at the time. Personally, don't think it was Jack. I really, w uh, why is he Hurley, Wisconsin? <laughs> I was gonna say, why would he make his way down? He started, he started the booming uh, mining trade. He was becoming an iron miner now. <laughs> he was trying to turn a new leaf. I doubt it. It's very unlikely. Is it possible? Most likely not. But it was just another, you know, another straw they were grasping at. Lottie was the girlfriend of a very, you know, well-known local politician. She was an actress. She was beloved by many. She was also potentially a prostitute. So, I don't know. It was just that everybody knew of Lottie. And so hearing of her being murdered this way just kind of like threw them off. They were just like, holy shit, that's crazy. <laughs> Eventually though, the two main suspects in the case would be the two guys that were a part of the Iron Bank Exchange bank robbery. I actually have their names right here. It was Ed Baker and Phelps Perrin. <laughs> <laughs> Those two men would be convicted, they would be convicted for the bank robbery, but they were also the prime suspects in Lottie's murder because again, the law officials working the case truly believed that she had seen the robbery, she was due to testify, these guys took her out. That didn't matter, it was the fact that one of their own had been murdered and they didn't know by who. Could be walking by him. As you, you know, you're taking out the garbage. I don't know if they did that in 1890. <laughs> you're walking by all these people and I'm sure the back of everybody's minds were like, did he do it? Was it him? Was it him? You just, you couldn't trust anybody. They throw a very lavish funeral for Lottie and a lot of people are in attendance. And they're even putting out like, I think it was a $500 reward for any information that could lead to the capture of her murder. Lottie is eventually forgotten. She just fades into obscurity along with Hurley itself. She's buried at a local cemetery, but this kind of made me sad is that it said that people would just pillage rocks from her headstone until there was nothing but a, lo a little rubble on the ground. She's essentially in an unmarked Why? grave. They were doing it as like some sort of morbid souvenirs just to keep, just taking pieces wow. of her grave as, you know, years ago when Travel Channel came down to Hurley and they actually ran an episode of Most Terrifying Places and Hurley made the list because people believe that Lottie haunts Hurley, Wisconsin. Maybe even looking for her killer, who knows? And she's obviously unrested because of the way she was removed from her life. That's it is sad. There were videos of bar stools moving in the bars. Like a lot of activity is alleged to go down at one particular bar. I believe it's Dawn's Inn now. It's called Dawn's Inn. They, they talk about their workers don't even want to go in the basement because they're just so <laughs> on edge, it's uncomfortable, you know? Her case goes unsolved and we're just left with a really sad story. And that was that that was it. I mean, that's it. That's the story of the murder, murder of Lottie Morgan. Who do you think did it? Who knows? <laughs> I know! Anybody, right? Constance just full of surprises, but yeah. So what'd you think? Crazy story? Our little cheese date finally getting some stories. Not the stories we really want, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye! Oh, my oh, legs! My legs!